The opening credits of David Fincher's latest feature, The Killer, I must admit, stirred my intrigue no end. With a blend of the meticulous, edgy editing of Seven, underscored by a soundtrack not dissimilar to Fight Club. Look around, I look around. I see a lot of new faces. <laughs> Shut up! The killer looked to be Fincher's nihilistic response to the popular John Wick franchise. A gritty, even comical take on what has really become quite an exhausted theme of the Hitman story. Shortly after this superb intro, Michael Fassbender waits ever patiently to carry out his next kill. He's methodical, exacting, meditative all while sonorously detailing his amoral worldview and career choice in an unwaveringly sombre yet detached voiceover. After all, this is what it takes if you want to succeed. He even does yoga for fuck's sake and sleeps without a pillow, probably clenches his PC muscle whenever he pisses for six rips a slash. He's hard with a capital Viagra. I don't give. Oh, uh, fuck. Ready to go at a moment's notice, even for a somehow dikier looking than usual Tilda Swinton. Forbid empathy. Empathy is weakness. He's one of the few, you see, not one of the slave mentality many, like you or me. Stretching this out like a snooze button hit power nap, we see him stretch, sleep, crack his neck, eat a McMuffin without the muffin, wear a stupid hat, never fap off, and constantly check his watch for his heart rate. All while basically repeating what he said two minutes ago. God's dead. He works for no flag. All there is is the void after this life. Yada, yada, yada. Anyone he kills is a mere blip in the 24-7 holocaust that is Mother Nature. Then, finally, he's got to pull the trigger. Music helps him focus, so he loads up the Smiths and, with Morrissey bitching about wanting to be hit by a 10-ton truck into his perfectly placed AirPods, totally botches up his piss-easy kill like an absolute fucking rookie. Fuck. And, well, even though the first 15 minutes of the film served as nothing more than a prolonged gag with a slapstick punchline, Fincher was behind the wheel, so it still worked pretty damn well. Sadly, this is where the killer should have ended. Instead, it stretches out another five or so of these vignettes, where Fassbender's nameless assassin seeks revenge against those who slapped his bitch up after he ballsed up the job. According to the rules, fuck up, and we won't like, you know, kill your family or nothing, just like, uh, sexually assault and beat up a pretty much needless plot device of a woman who you apparently love, so you can go kill the people who are now trying to kill you because you failed to kill who you were hired to kill, despite you knowing that this is what would happen if you fucked up any kill in the first place. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Weird. If all of this so far sounds like a joke, it just might be, since that's the killer's entire plot. A step-by-step -step guide almost, where each guilty party is taken down in a style totally contradictory to the motivational quips our protagonist keeps repeating to himself. Forbid empathy. Whilst the film certainly has moments of droll black comedy and gallows humour, one can't help but wonder if the entire production was one big lol. A film seemingly so serious, stylish, expertly crafted and meticulously put together, ending up as one massive piss take out of the process of filmmaking in the first place. Even the poster comes with the tagline, execution is everything. The opening line essentially gives everything away too. It's amazing how physically exhausting it can be to do nothing. If you are unable to endure boredom, this work is not for you. If Fincher was schoolgirl grinningly referring to the process of filmmaking, he inadvertently also meant his own fucking film as well. The killer is Fight Club without the fisticuffs. <laughs> and Seven sands the sins. What's in the fucking box? It's like watching a filmmaking masterclass documentary, only with a lackluster script you do your best to salvage an engaging experience and narrative out of. In days of a harsher mood, I'd say this was a David Fincher vanity project, a John Wick without the fun, as the killer, with its teenage boy revenge fantasy first draft, takes itself so seriously as if in disguise to conceal its half assed plot and contrived voiceover narration. This is what it takes. 
Never has a view into the mind of a methodical psychopath been so bore-lakingly dull. As a true testament to Fincher's ability though, he somehow made this two-hour film not feel overrun, despite it having about as much depth as the bullet holes his protagonist left in his victims. Each sequence, divided into chapters of the most benign and archetypal characters, from the brute to the expert to the whoever even gives a fuck, are each dealt with in such a methodical manner as to virtually hypnotise you during a viewing. It's paced to utter perfection. Maybe that's the biggest joke though, as being hypnotised is not only a dull experience, but usually one you can't fucking remember after it's all over. Just like with the movie. There'll be a predictable amount of praise thrown its way because it's Fincher, but just like when I sat down to watch Panic Room, fresh off the back of Seven and Fight Club, the killer will be forgotten quicker than Jared Leto's braids and the moany Twilight chick as she tries to escape getting fingered by Jodie Foster. The cold, atomized reality of the modern world is pretty well depicted in the movie though, and something I wish it pushed further, like the beef men had with their meaningless lives in a soulless corporate world. Where Fight Club pushed boundaries, sticking its middle finger up to the establishment, the killer reflects the indifference of our times today, where any exchange with another person is as brief as humanly possible, and most obstacles can be overcome via an Amazon drop-off point. The hitman is hired as if off a nap like Just Eats, and Killer Roo himself is certainly not averse to the odd gadget or two. Even the credits work similarly to a thirsty everyman swiping his way through Tinder, though, notably, every swipe goes a swift fuck no left, so each profile must have been a single mum. These elements, alongside the satirical humour, should have made the film far more enjoyable than it was. While it makes some sly observations regarding the atomized New World Order, the script itself has Val do first draft vibes, like a disillusioned content creator throwing a paragraph at ChatGPT just to turn out another piece of content. At times, it was like our lead, amoral hardman, was regurgitating title cards from a kid's version of Robert Greene's The 48 Laws of Power. Trust no one. Never yield an advantage. Anticipate. Don't improvise. Stick to your plan. Each and every step of the way, ask yourself, what's in it for me? It was effective at the beginning because it seemed like his faux Nietzschean aphorisms were going to fall like a house of cards after he fucked it all up, only for our unnamed assassin to keep tediously repeating them throughout the entire fucking movie. Instead of an art house taken or philosophical John Wick, Fincher's hitman was more like an angsty Mr. Bean after someone stole his fucking teddy bear. The only time Fassbender manages to get us to warm to him is when he intentionally dresses like a German tourist in Paris to blend in and be as forgettable as possible. Something of which he undoubtedly achieves. This method, however, is directly contradicted when we encounter his endless list of aliases all of whom are named after famous characters from bygone sitcoms like Happy Days and Cheers. It provides a brief lol and contradiction of his character, but completely fuck all else, as no cop or even car hire assistant picks up on the scent of his bullshit. Why was it in the film then? I want to be polite with you, and, and I prefer not to, to answer to the question because your question is really a, a bad question. It's really? really a bad question because it looks like is is my fault, is my problem, and your question is not is not correct. I'm sorry. Okay. Maybe, just maybe, this is a film you warm to a little more on a second watch, where the direct contradictions and paradoxes of its thoughts versus its behaviour are more easily seen and embraced when you look at it with prior knowledge. Not fucking likely though. To achieve that, you need rewatchable scenes and dialogue people want to memorise. Sadly for the killer, the script sounds like it was written by a teenager making out as if he read Beyond Good and Evil after memorising a smorgasbord of edgelord memes from a nihilist reddit page. It is still a Fincher movie though, so it's better than a lot of the other shit Netflix normally dumps out, but fuck me gently, since when did that become a compliment? During the first kill, the hitman constantly checks his watch foreshadowing your own behaviour as the viewer the longer the movie goes on, but rather than the time, our assassin wants to know the rate of his heartbeats per second. He never pulls the trigger until it's at a cool, calm, collected 60, you see. A heart rate that, you too, will never go a beat above 
during its two-hour run. Well, with perhaps the exception of the fight scene, watching the killer getting his ass handed to him is pretty damn good, I'll admit. I just wish the pit bull got his balls. If the Ubermensch wannabe turned into a eunuch halfway through the movie, it just might have made him interesting. From start to finish, however, he remains an absolute fucking drip. It's as if the whole movie was made to give NPC assassins more representation. As Nietzsche once said, Take care when fighting dreadful boars, that you yourself do not turn into a dreadful boar. For when you gaze long enough into Finch's the Killer, Finch's the Killer gazes also into... Mm-hmm. <laughs>